Hello, and welcome again, my fellow goof people, to another episode of Something Something Chat Show with Tom Jr. Jackson Presents. After the movie review, holiday edition, episode eight. And today we will be discussing the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, now streaming on Disney+. Plus. But first, a word. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell on not only my channel, but the two channels listed below. Check out, uh, actually, uh, the, the channels that I listed below, I should say, the channels. Uh, please sub, uh, check out, subscribe to the Bro Network, a post geek singularity channel where they have such shows as Midnight Musings, Midnight Metal, Rob Observations, Let's Get Physical Media, the uh, Twice a Month show, K Pasa, PGS, which is 97% Spanish, and also the new one of the newer shows, which is Ladies of the PGS with your host RM, who's the host, uh, co-host of uh, Midnight Musings, but she also does uh, Ladies of the PGS with a co-host, Lorena Creole, which by the way, her channel will be listed down below. Check that one out and subscribe to it as well. Um, Ladies of the PGS is every Monday, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Pacific time is on the West Coast, California time. Just so that you know. But also, RM has her own YouTube channel called Positive Fandom, where she does unboxings, reviews, uh, she has a show, a show every Sunday morning, which is at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, that's New York time, 7.30 a.m. Pacific, that's California time, and the show is called Sunday Brunch Live, and she has a co-host named Russell Whitfield, who you can check out at Russell Whitfield, russellwhitfield.com, he's an author, he's got books, check it out. Uh, Sunday Brunch Live is a show two, two and a half hours long where uh, all the pop culture that is fit to parlay and one show is parlayed. Check it out. Let's get to our um, review. So join me. Shall you? As I said before, I am Tom Jr. Jackson. This is after the movie review, holiday edition, episode eight, The Guardians of the Galaxy. Holiday special is the topic. It is written and directed by James Gunn, who is now, as you may know, the, one of the supervising heads of DC uh, Universe over at Warner Brother Discovery. So Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special takes place, uh, the timeline it takes place in is um, between Thor Love and Thunder and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So it's in the middle there. That's in the middle. I don't know why I'm doing that. And it's, it, it's basically Drax and the other guardians notice that Peter Quill, Star-Lord, played by Chris Pratt, is sad uh, because Yondu had ruined the idea of Christmas for him. And the beautiful part of this uh, special movie, whatever you want to call it, is that there's animation in this and it's reminiscent of the old Star Wars holiday special. 
and it's just hand-drawn goodness. So the flashbacks in this are done with um, animation, which I think is great. I think what I really would have dug is if they did the whole thing, like claymation or um, the old Wink and Bass, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman type thing. I would have gone for it like that. I, that would have been cool. But I digress. And so Mantis and Drax decide to go to Earth to get uh, Peter Quill, Star Lord, the ultimate present for Christmas. Kevin Bacon. They decide they're going to get Kevin Bacon. And it is funny with how they get him. It, it, it is funny, the, the, the movie special is endearing, it's heartwarming, it's fun. Um, I certainly enjoyed it, but it fits in with phase four, which the theme of phase four has been family, love, loss, grief, and overcoming it. And I would say that started with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, where Peter, you know, is overcoming losing his mom he loses his father he loses yondu and then we get into infinity war end game where we lose a lot of characters and then you got thor who is depressed over not killing thanos the right way and chooses not to deal with it and chooses to shrug it off. And he's also not dealing with his breakup with Jane or Jane's breakup with him too well. So that shows up in Thor, Love and Thunder. Um, then you got WandaVision with Wanda um, having a hard time grieving over vision and not wanting to deal with the fact that he's gone. Um, then you got, in Thor Love and Thunder, you have Jane dealing uh, with her uh, cancer and not being able to come to terms with it and brushing that off and, and using humor for it. And uh, you got Dr. Strange and in the Multiverse of Madness, he's dealing with um, his his girlfriend or ex girlfriend now, Christina or Christine, yeah, Christine, getting married to someone else, and he says he's fine, but he's not fine. And then we come to Black Panther, Love and Thunder, where you have Shuri not wanting to accept the loss of uh, Takala and not accept that her brother is gone and she feels the guilt and grief over not being able to save him in time. And, but it's all about these people overcoming these things. And to me, phase four was a very powerful phase. Um, Miss Marvel was about family, um, Eternals, family, lost, uh, Shang-Chi, family, loss, overcoming it. So it's, it's, it's all the theme. No one has brought this up in any other reviews of any of phase four. I think I've seen one article, and that was the other day about this, and that grief and loss is a big part of phase four, which now, just now, people are starting to, to realize. But I've been saying this all along, that this is what it is. People are like, well, it's so out of, out of order, and I don't understand it. No, this is, this is phase four, folks. This is what it is. And even though they may not all connect, the stories may not all connect, because uh, Kevin Feige has said after Endgame, well, phase four is not going to be about connecting for a while. 
right? Phase four is not about connecting. Phase four is about, you know, is going to be standalone, sort of standalone stories. And they were, but the connectivity to it all was family, love, loss, grief, and overcoming it. Those were the terms that it was going through. And I wasn't expecting that from Marvel. But then again, a lot of comic books do that. They will pick a theme that will be lost and get anger and, 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 and whatnot. And it is part of reality. Like there are people that when something traumatic happens to them, they either laugh it off or they'll, you know, become themselves. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Everything's fine. And, and I think both Thor and Jane were in a way the same of not being able to accept the obstacles in front of them. But they sort of overcome them. You know? Um, so, so you got that. Anyways, back to the holiday special. I wanted to get that out and explain that about phase four, because that's what it's about. So also, um, it goes with Star-Lord um, losing Gamora as well. He's sad about that. He's sad about Yondu. So it's a lot of emotion for phase four. Uh, case in point, Peter losing Aunt May and then having to give up who he is so no one remembers him, but he's still Spider-Man. That's a lonely life now because no one knows you. No one remembers you. And only you remember them, but they don't know you. Very, very sad. So it goes through phase four very, very well. Um, I love that there are original Christmas songs, which is, it's, it's a hard thing for anyone to write a Christmas song. They, they will, I, I've seen articles with uh, celebrity, uh, musical artists who have said, oh, I tried to write a Christmas song. It was very hard to do. What? what is new that you can write that hasn't already been written you know it, it's it's a lot and it is funny how these aliens all interpret the idea of christmas and it is done in a song and it's done very humorously we get cosmo as one of the guardians now and you got Groot there and rocket and Ooh. Craiglin, um, Yandu's number number one, I guess you'd call him. But the beauty in this is there's the message of, of, of family and, and cheer and Christmas in this. And yeah, it may be a little hokey, but it's it's fantastic and it's perfect for the times we live in. We need something happy. We need something good. When things are so dismal, and um, you know, crazy, you got this wonderful holiday special. But I, I, I do have to say that it is it is great that James Gunn did this. Because now it gives you that hankering for, oh, if this is this, what is volume three going to bring to Guardians of the Galaxy? And uh, I'm absolutely excited for that. Absolutely excited to see what volume three has to bring and what James Gunn has to bring 
and what he has to bring forward with the DC universe as well. I love that he loves both both camps. You know, he loves DC and Marvel. He is the ultimate. He is an imagination connoisseur, as it is. He loves movies. He loves to geek out on comics, and it's it's fantastic. You know. Um, certainly, I think this will be a repeat viewing every holiday season. I think I'll end up watching this again on Christmas Eve as well. Um, and, and Drax and Mantis on Earth, and this is perfect. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, that should be it. And I think it is, folks. So come back next time. Join us, shall you, for another episode of After the Movie Review, Holiday Edition, where we review another holiday film or special. We are in um, that time. Once again, where the holidays have come and they're bringing us something special down the line. And I hope you join us again. So please remember to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell on not only my channel, but the channels below. And until we meet again, please remember we are all goof people. Thank you for watching. Have a pleasant tomorrow. Bye-bye.